Hello and welcome to Maths with Jay. In this video, we are going to solve a linear congruence. So here, 17x is congruent to 3 mod 29. Now, if this was an ordinary equation with ordinary arithmetic, in order to solve it, we would divide both sides by 17. But in modular arithmetic, we can't divide. So we've got to do something slightly different. In fact, in ordinary arithmetic, you could think of solving an equation like 17x equals 3. Instead of dividing both sides by 17, you could think of multiplying both sides by a 17th. 1 over 17. And in fact that's the sort of thing we need to think about doing with modular arithmetic. So what we're doing here is we're looking for a multiplicative inverse of 17 in modulo 29. So that means what we're looking for is a number, an integer, so that when we multiply it by 17 we end up with 1. So let's just write that down. Let's call our integer v. So we're looking for an integer v such that 17v is congruent to 1. And of course that's in mod 29. And then once we find that, our value for x is going to be 3 times that value v, because we'd be multiplying both sides of our congruence by v. So we're expecting to find that x is congruent to 3v mod 29. So if 17v is congruent to 1, in mod 29, then that means that 17v must be equal to 1 plus or minus 29 times something. Now I'm going to put in a minus here, and w is an integer, as yet also unknown. So we don't know what v is, we don't know what w is, apart from the fact that they're both whole numbers. So another way of writing this statement, instead of writing 17v is equal to 1 minus 29w, we could write it as 17v plus 29w is equal to 1. And that will look familiar to you if you've already looked at Euclid's algorithm and its extension, Bezout's identity. So what we're looking to do here is find v. Remember, that's the important thing. Once we've found v, we'll be able to solve our linear congruence. And we'll be able to do that by using Euclid's algorithm on the numbers 17 and 29. Now we know that 17 and 29 are co-prime. That means they don't have a common factor and that their highest common factor is 1. So in fact, we know that 17v plus 29w will be equal to 1. So all will work out as it should when we use Euclid's algorithm. Our final remainder will be 1. And then, remember what we'll need to do is make all the remainders the subject of each line and then use backward substitution to get Bezout's identity to find what 1 is in terms of 17 and 29. In other words, we'll find what v and w are, v being the important thing here. So let's have a look at that. So using Euclid's algorithm on 29 and 17 means that we're dividing 29 by 17. Well, 17 only goes in once, so 29 is 1 times 17 and our remainder will be 
12. And then we're looking at dividing 12 into 17. So this is only going to go in once and leaves a remainder of 5. And then we're dividing 12 by 5. So 5 goes into 12 twice. So that gives us 2 times 5 with a remainder of 2. And then 5. Well, dividing 2s into 5 gives us 2. And we've got a remainder of 1. So now we've got down to our remainder of 1, we can stop. And what we'll do next is rearrange each line so that we make the remainder the subject. So looking at the first line, the remainder is 12. So let's just keep it simple and write 29 minus 17. No need to write in the 1 there. And then the remainder in the next line is 5. And we can see that 5 is 17 minus 12. And then we've got 2 equal to 12 minus 2 times 5. And finally 1 is 5 minus 2 times 2. So if you're unsure of any of these, you can always check them. So for example, looking at the third line, 12 minus 2 times 5, well that's 12 minus 10, and that is 2. So you can always check the arithmetic as you go along. So now we're ready to do our backward substitution. Remember what we're aiming to do is to write 1 is equal to 17 times something, plus or minus 29 times something. So we're starting with our last line. So 1 is 5 minus 2 times 2. And we're going to replace the final 2 by the remainder 2 in the previous line. So no need to write the times there, we can just open a bracket and we're replacing 2 by 12 minus 2 times 5. And we can multiply out the bracket. So we'll leave that 5 for now and we're going to have 2 times 12 or minus 2 times 12. Then we've got negative 2 times negative 2, so that will be plus 4 times 5. So you can see we've got a 5 and a 4 times 5, so that's 5 fives. So 5 times 5, and we've still got minus 2 times 12. So we've written 1 in terms of 5 and 12. Looking back up at our next line in our backward substitution, we're now looking at 5 being equal to 17 minus 12. So we'll replace the second 5 by that. So instead of that 5, we've got 17 minus 12. And we've still got minus 2 times 12. Now we'll multiply out the brackets. So we've got 5 times 17 minus 5 times 12, and still the minus 2 times 12. And then when we simplify, we'll still have 5 times 17, and we can combine minus 5 times 12 and minus 2 times 12 to give us minus 7 times 12. So we've now expressed 1 in terms of 17 and 12 
Remember our aim is to express 1 in terms of 17 and 29, so we're nearly there. All we need to do now is replace our 12 from our top line, where we've written 12 in terms of 29 and 17, and then with a bit of simplification we'll be done. So we've got 5 times 17, we want the 17, so that's good, and then minus 7 times, and then 12 is 29 minus 17. So we just need to simplify this. So let's just leave the 5 times 17 for a moment, multiply out the bracket. So we've got minus 7 times 29, and then minus 7 times minus 17 will be plus 7 times 17. So now we can combine our 5 times 17 with 7 times 17 to get 12 times 17, and then leave the minus 7 times 29. So let's just compare this with our 17v plus 29w is 1. So we could write this as 17 times 12 plus 29 times negative 7 equals 1. So what we've actually done is we have shown that 17 times 12 is congruent to 1 mod 29. So what we've done there is we have found a multiplicative inverse of 17 in mod 29. We know that we can solve our linear congruence by multiplying both sides by 12. So let's just write down the original problem again. So we've got 17x is congruent to 3, and now let's multiply both sides by 12. And the important thing is, we have just found that 12 times 17 is congruent to 1, so on the left hand side we're left with x. On the right hand side, 12 threes, well they're 36. But as we're in mod 29, we can subtract 29 from that, or any other multiple as necessary here, we just need to take off 129, and we're left with 7. And of course we could check our answer. We should find that when we multiply 17 by 7, that we end up getting something that's congruent to 3. So 17 times 7 is 119. And 119, well, that's 4 times 29, which is 116, plus 3. So that is congruent to 3. So that's all good. So our check has shown that our answer of x is congruent to 7 is correct.